Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV, where we are in Razatan right now, because we did all the roll quests here, and there is a finale. Bitter Snow. Well, if it's in Desiree, all around good egg and champion of, well, the whole world, I suppose. What travels fast, my friend? You've heard all about your exploits, defeating the blasphemies that plague the good people of Eorzea and Doma. Sadly, there are other fell beasts that get one for slaying, but we're not. Our efforts to bring them low proceed to pace, and we have not but glad tidings from our allies. Reports from Garlemald, however, suggest another blasphemy threat lurks in the snows, and we received a petition for assistance. Strange, don't you think? When the effects of the final days began to spread in earnest, we encountered a great many monsters in Garlemald, but never a blasphemy. And to make matters worse, they say the Guardians who chose to remain and rebuild have begun transforming into yet more hideous creatures. From what I understand, it's you and your comrades who brought an end to the source of the final days, is that right? Even so, it would appear its effects will linger a while longer. Until this malevolent influence on Akasa subsides, I dare say this won't be the last time we hear of such sightings. As for the blasphemy, we have reasons to believe it's a great deal stronger than any we've faced thus far. Your strength and experience would prove quite valuable, if you're willing to help, of course. Is the Isabel contingent not equipped to handle this threat? I should certainly think so. No sooner did we receive a quest from Charlien, they began making preparations to dispatch their forces. That said, it was clear from the first they were hoping you might also take up the hunt. Oh, if I may be frank, I was not expecting Charlien of all places to be so concerned with the present state of Garlemald, or with her strict policies of non-intervention. Perhaps we find out the reason before this is all over. But that is an inquiry for another time. I'll not keep you any longer. Once you arrive in Garlemald, I would should think the intelligence officer stationed there would be more than happy to apprise you of the situation. So, where do we go? Camp Broken Glass. Okay, Intelligence Officer of Alamigo. Desiree! Me, Desiree? It's an honor to have you with us, miss. I presume you've come to assist in our hunt for a blasphemy? Maxima and Lucia will be pleased to hear it, if you would come this way. It's good to see you, Desiree. Why well, wish it were under more fortuitous circumstances? He were reluctant to call upon you, knowing you but recently returned from the far reaches of the heavens. But we are no less glad for your aid. Now then, I believe it best if a man who first discovered this blasphemy explained the situation. Portional. Ah, Desiree, good. You may forgo introductions then. Thank you for answering our call for assistance. As for the situation at hand, it concerns a joint effort between the Forum and the Lopowitz to find new purpose for the moon. While there is no longer need for a vessel to evacuate the star, we believe a moon may yet prove of use to the people of Aferis. After much contemplation, a rather ingenious proposal was put forward. To transform the moon into a repository for man's knowledge. An archive of hitherto unseen scale. Charlene has long had the honor of boasting incomparable repositories of the world's knowledge, but it is far from perfect. Should calamity befall us, natural or otherwise, wisdom of ages we have long labored to preserve would be lost. But the moon is beyond any such risk. What's more, it is beyond the jurisdiction of any one nation. 
Was did we consult with the allied nations of Eorzea, the Far East and Rosatan? They agreed to assemble a survey team to take measure of the moon and its potential as a repository. Our plans for assessment were forestalled, however, by the presence of an entity we believe to be a blasphemy in the Tower of Babel. Claims of Galian citizens transforming into monsters shortly after its discovery only gave further credence to our initial supposition. But we have not only ill tidings to share. Reinforcements have been dispatched to aid us in quelling the blasphemy threat. Lord Atterwell and a member of the Gridanian Keepers of the Entwined Serpents have already begun an investigation into the catalyst of these transformations. Though the sky is no longer born and the spread of his affliction is much curtailed, we must remain vigilant. Until the blasphemy threat has been quelled, Alphino and Alize have graciously offered to help keep calm the people of Tershin, while we attend to the people here. But the matter of a blasphemy is not so easily resolved, I'm afraid. We recently met with certain uh, complications that have hindered our plans. Yugiri and Fodola are presently deliberating how best to resolve the situation. Perhaps it would be best if you heard the details directly from them. I should like to join you if I may. As this endeavor was originally undertaken on Charlian's behalf, I feel it is my responsibility to see it through to its conclusion. Yugiri and Fordola. Ha, <laughs> somehow I should have known you would turn up eventually. I did not expect to see you here of all places, but I'm no less glad for your presence. I presume word of a blasphemy is what brought you here? In which case, I believe it may be best if a member of the Reconnaissance team's guard Explain the situation. Lawrence! An acquaintance of yours? Long time no see, Lawrence. I shall tell you where the world is sought, but pagger me if I know where she heard my name before. <clears throat> I'm just a lowly sword for hire, hoping to fatten my purse with a touch of mercenary work after taking my leave from Limsa. The jobs are not simple enough, but, well, I'm sure you wouldn't be here if it were, huh? Uh, but you didn't come all this way to hear about me, did you? The blasphemy we're after is making its nest in the upper reaches of the Tower of Babel. The auxiliary sector, I believe it was. But it wasn't alone. A sizable horde of beasts were circling about like knights protecting their queen. Naturally, we fought to strike from a distance before engaging in earnest, but not a single bullet reached its mark. They were protected by some manner of mystical shroud as far as I could figure. Without a keen eye for magic, I don't see anyone getting through. By the time we understood the futility of the situation, we had been spotted. Retreat was our only option. Pains me to say it, but there won't be any brute forcing our way through this one. My understanding was that once transformed, these blasphemies are completely devoid of ether. With what energies could it create such a barrier? That's the question, isn't it? My first thought was some heretofore unknown technique for conjuring shields. He does to say I'm out of my depth when it comes to matters of magic. With precisely why I plan to speak with the Elder Seeds here when she arrives. If anyone can help us find a way to overcome the blasphemy's protection at all. In the meantime, could we trouble you to help with a not-so-small matter of people changing into beasts? The Blasphemy's Horde was large enough when first we found it. We can't afford for more to join its ranks. Very well. We shall reconvene with Lord Arturel and discuss strategy.
Ah, before you go, there's something else you should know about the tower. From the moment we set foot inside, I could swear there was someone... Or something watching us. I shrugged it off, thinking it a figment of my imagination, but... In hindsight, I'm not so sure. Nothing to worry ourselves about now, but best keep on your guard when we do finally return to the tower, huh? I'm um, about sense of guards, by the way. He asked me to tell you not to push yourself, but we all know what a waste of breath that will prove to be. Lord Hien will be arriving ere long. Happily dressed for the cold, I should hope. Rosetsu would no doubt count himself fortunate to be absent if he knew we were here. God, so what I wouldn't give for a nice hot bowl of soup. Under normal circumstances, I would never dream of leaving the Elder Seeds to her side, but considering the nature of these blasphemies and the calamity they bring, she insisted a representative of Gridania proceed to her arrival. It would appear the investigation into the recent report of refugees transforming is well underway. Ah, Desiree, it is good to have you with us, my friend. Indeed, the world before us is not an easy one. And a woman of your talents will prove invaluable in our efforts. We but recently returned from reconnaissance, whereas we made a few rather surprising discoveries. First and foremost, we were pleased to discover that no one residing within Camp Broken Glass or Tertian have turned, no doubt thanks to the concerted effort of Maxima, Alphenaut, and Alizé. However, we have reason to believe that those who did turn all hail from Locos Aminos. You mean Corvus, the Guardian ancestral home? The very same. When the ill effects of our final days began to manifest there, a number of Guardian refugees from the region sought sanctuary in Garlemald. But the capital was already on ruin when they arrived. They were offered asylum, but many refused and instead chose to fend for themselves on the outskirts of the city. We have a mind to go and speak with them directly if you would care to join us. Perhaps together we can learn what their recent circumstances has triggered such terrible change among their people. Locos Amino suffered greatly in the wake of her final days. It's only natural would have sought shelter at the capital, but I can but imagine their horror upon arrival. Frozen Hope Time being of the essence, I believe it prudent we split into two groups and cover as much ground as we may, as quickly as possible. If you and Master Fortune would inquire after the people of Victor's spoils, the two of us shall see what you may learn at Liminal Station 4. When you have finished, pray meet us there. Victor sports to the east of here, yes? Let us be off. If they should choose to reside here in the cold, I can presume they will not be amenable to conversation. Even so, we must not be deterred. Come. Talk? What's there to talk about? We have no home, no future, nothing. This doom spells the end for us all. Come to hear our grievances, have you? <laughs> you have more than you have time to hear, then, I'm sure. We've lost not one, but two homes. Our loved ones, our livelihood. There's nothing left. I served my time with a military eye, but for what? To lose all my friends, my son. 
it was not to show for it, but our claim to look was a minus. Also, we thought calamity was visited upon us for reasons we know not, and then we fought to flee. It followed on our heels to Garlemald, ruined us at every turn. Shall we meet back here when we have finished? Can't imagine why you or anyone else would feign interest in our troubles, but if you insist, you'll find a great many of the people here were in the military at one time or another. Some retiring with honors, others without. Sadly, I'm one of a ladder. Wore one too many scars in battle. Even so, my contributions were enough to warrant leave to move to Locus Amonus. Was it a land of warmth and bounty? The Corvosi rebellion admittedly proved troublesome for a time, but it didn't take long for the Second Legion to quell the uprising. You could practically drown in the calm and quiet. And then one day the sky came alive with flame. We were overwhelmed by all manner of foul beasts born of our brothers and sisters. The Second Legion barely had time to assemble their force before they were overrun and snuffed out. We barely escaped with our lives. But we were greeted with only more of wreck and ruin on our arrival here, and we have not the strength to take our home back from the Corvosi a second time. There is nothing left for us anywhere. Did you learn aught of how they came to be in such a dire strait? I see, you heard much of the same. The military force of Locus Aminus were defeated in the wake of the final days. Desperate to survive, they naturally fled to Garlemald City King's Sanctuary. It was their hope the might of the Empire would allow them to reclaim the home they were forced to abandon. But the capital was already in ruin when they arrived. Needless to say, the lands they have long believed to be the ancestral home of the Galian people may remain forever lost to them. Those unfamiliar with history would believe they have always resided in the bitter cold climes of northern Ilzebad, but that was only after the Corvosi invaded 800 years prior. The advent of Magitek, I imagine it was all too easy for Emperor Solus to rally his people and take back what they believed to be rightfully theirs. Yeah? Yet history would tell us true. The land they call Locus Aminus has been known by other names, and served as home to myriad peoples. Indeed, one need only look back to the Alagans' reign, the third astral era, to give a lie to Galian claims of sovereignty. Yet, even had they such ancestral ties to Locus Aminus, antecedents cannot justify their animosity to foreign peoples. Animosity purely veiled by the delusions of justice as has been the case for so many nations throughout history. Was it man that was sentenced to strength of will to break free from such chains of hatred? Help! Someone help! The they've turned! Another monster? Quickly, Desri. We haven't a moment to lose. One of my mates seemed unwell, so I thought to come over and look in on him. Next thing I know, he... he... No one appears to be injured. Did he not attack? He just walked off in the direction of a tower, in the days as if it was calling to him. He could not have gone far. If you would go after him, I will remain here and see that all are accounted for.
A beast is slain, man? Thank the heavens. For a blessing no others have turned, and a measure of calm has been restored if only for the moment. Witnesses were able to offer a clue as to the source of the transformation. They claim the afflicted was listening to this radio. Even now it continues to play the same cryptic message. Empire, no more, never again rise, ashes. Though distorted by radio static, you can hear a voice saying, The Empire is no more, never again shall it rise from the ashes. But how is it possible? There are no facilities left standing that could possibly deliver a broadcast. The last time this happened, the signal came from the Tower of Babel. Be that as it may, Anima is no more, the Tower of Babel has fallen into disrepair, by your hand no less. Which begs the question, who or perhaps what could be behind this? Desiree? Master Fortuno, a moment if you would. Oi. Shortly after we finished our inquiry in Liminal Station 4, Lord Emmerich and Admiral Merwip arrived and requested an audience. Apologies for my late arrival. Knowing firsthand the devastation of which blasphemies are capable of, I discussed the matter with the Admiral, and we were of one mind that the situation warranted our immediate presence. Is it safe to assume a representative of a survey team has already arrived? Indeed I have. Thank you for coming all this way on such short notice. Recent events here at the camp have proved most enlightening. And this is the aforementioned radio. Empire no more. Never again rise ashes. A harsh reminder of a misfortune, sufficient to push some way what few of the edge it would seem. Yet, there still remains the question of who is sending this message and from where. Glory, everlasting, Garamalt. For glory everlasting, for Garamalt. No, it couldn't be. You recognize the message? A mantra often spoken by no Lord Nerva. Anyone who lived in the provinces under his authority could scarcely forget those words. He sought to claim the throne after the assassination of Emperor Varus, did he not? After civil war broke out, he all but disappeared according to the intelligence we managed to gather. How could he have managed to breach the tower undetected? To have done so and remain unnoticed by the creature infesting the tower seems a nigh impossible task. Unless. Do you think the voice on the radio is for blasphemy? I do. And as it was with Anima, these radios are somehow attuned to whatever signal it emits from the tower. What's more, I believe the true identity of a blasphemy is Nerva, robbed of a throne and forced to watch the Empire he longed to command tremble before his very eyes. If such loss did not drive him into the same fate as Quintus, the despair he felt no doubt overcame and turned him. Nerva's delusions of grandeur aside, the Guardian's plight sounds not unlike the Sargin, desperate to preserve their spawning grounds. Indeed. For unscrupulous by any means, the Guardians found solidarity in their ideology, as if the people of Ishgard and the Church. Adrift without home or purpose, it's all too easy for despair to take hold. What better remedy were as simple as offering them land as we did to the Sargin? In all likelihood, the Guardians would refuse to settle for aught less than what they believed to be their ancestral homeland of Locos Aminos, a claim the Corvosi would readily take arms to denounce. 
You would do well not to further fan the flames of animosity betwixt them. Then perhaps, at the very least, we can offer them peace of mind, and a means to regain some semblance of stability in their lives. To offer them true comfort and stability, Garlemald must be rebuilt. By no means an easy solution, but perhaps the only one worthy of pursuit. Of course, this new Garlemald must remain a sovereign nation, free of the oversight of others. Aye, they would see no meaning in it otherwise. If I'm not mistaken, Alphino and Alizé have already made strides in helping the people here. We gain some normalcy in their day-to-day -day lives. A most important first step, but it will mean little without proper leadership. Rather than a single individual, perhaps a sovereign body of sorts would prove more effective? There are a number of former Senate members among the refugees at Camp Brokenglass, as I recall. With their help, creating the framework for new governance is not an impossibility. Let us call the people together and see what they make of our proposal. The final days have taken much from you all. I can but imagine the pain you feel in the face of such immeasurable loss. Though the final days have been averted, its effects yet linger, and the blasphemy has been born of your suffering. Decisive action must be taken before further harm is wrought upon you. To overcome such adversity is too great a task for any one person. But as a people united, there may yet be hope for the morrow. But it is not our place to decide how you will move forward. We would offer a small measure of guidance. We were told a number of former members of your senate yet remain amongst you. Would you be amenable to an interim government led by those individuals under such time as Garlemald can be rebuilt? Rebuild Garlemald. Is such a thing truly possible? Ha! <laughs> Even if we do cobble together some governing council, they won't be making anything of a pile of ashry deck called Garlemald. There's no going back to Locus Aminos either. Wreck and ruin. Those are our only option. I realize to rebuild Garlemald is a seemingly impossible task, but you needn't undertake it alone. My children are working with members of the First Legion as we speak to begin an organized relief effort. And there are others in, from the provinces no doubt willing to lend their expertise. You need but ask, not as would-be conquerors, but as brothers and sisters of his star, and others will heed your call. If you should still see no merit in the rebuilding of Garlemald, then I would instead offer you residency in Charlien. I promise you will be welcomed with open arms. Charlien? So now you expect us to go and lick boots in some country we've never even heard of? My apologies if I appeared overly forward in my proposition. Considering our strict policies on non-intervention until but recently, it's not surprising that you are unfamiliar with my homeland. It's an island nation to the north, home to myriad peoples, which is why I believe it would not prove difficult to accommodate you and yours. To be clear, you would not be migrating to Charlene to live in servitude. You have my word that each and every one of you would be guaranteed citizenship upon entry. And why exactly would you go to such lengths for us, for the conquerors you barely know? Charlene was long aware of the coming doom that would be the final days. 
and so we were preparing to evacuate with Star, taking many people and resources our stores would allow. Initially, it was our intent to save the people of Garlemald as well, but we had not forgotten your transgressions invading Alamigo, your rejection of our entreaties for peace. And after a great deal of deliberation, it was decided that we would forego an invitation to Garlemald, a determination made with great trepidation. We had convinced ourselves this would ultimately for the greater good, well, I can think of at least one individual who would continue to protest. To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it's indolence. His father. Sage Council, I brazenly cast aside and confronted with the final days in earnest. But Desiree and her companions refused to forsake those we were otherwise unwilling to save. With great risk to themselves, they achieved the impossible and opened my eyes to the error of a form's decision. If all other worlds lead to ruin regardless, perhaps we should co at least consider it. Then it would be my pleasure to invite you all to Camp Brokenglass, where you shall have warm food and beds both. Admiral Malweb and I shall speak with Maxima and the others and consider how best to assist the Guardians moving forward. Should we broach the subject of a blasphemy, however, we do not hesitate to call upon you. Who's this? So, Fortuno, how do we continue from here? We have a blasphemy who's probably a former uh, former Gallian prince. So, a misguided few. With a Gallian's heart at ease, the likelihood of others turning us greatly diminished. That said, it's no cause for us to grow complacent. We must needs find a way to overcome the blasphemy's protective warding. If I understand correctly, a blasphemy's behavior is oftentimes influenced by the memories and emotions of the originator, in which case it would be prudent to learn more of a man who birthed this monstrosity. Of a tour to send when a number of soldiers from the Third Legion are in our custody. For a mercy, the tempering was not so severe as to be beyond our ability to heal them. They are presently being treated at Camp Brokenglass. Perhaps a campus intelligence officer can tell us who among them knows aught of Nervous whereabouts. Intelligence person. I see. Perhaps it would be best if you speak with Virgilia Legatus of the Third Legion. She's still on the mend, but the Chirurgians aren't like to oppose a brief conversation, if you would wait here a moment. Thank you. 
Aeosia's champion, I presume, and one of her cohorts. What business have you with me? Isabel is faced with imminent crisis and we believe the knowledge you bear may be key in stopping it. Thus do we believe a blasphemy to be Nerva. His whereabouts in the wake of Garlemald's fall or lack thereof give credence to our theory. Lord Nerva. From what we have pieced together thus far, you are one of the last to see him alive. Please, will you not share with us what you know? Very well, though I suspect what meager knowledge I possess shall avail you not. I last spoke with Lord Nerva shortly after the war and with the First Legion began. Cloistered within the lower levels of uh, Senaculum Imperialis, he spent the better part of the day listening attentively to the radio. He seemed hopeful, or perhaps desperate, for news that the tide might turn in our favor. The next day I left for the front line. It was there I heard a terrible noise, which I assume came from the Tower of Babel. Then darkness took me and I remember not after that. I was told the radios protected those close to them from the effects of the tower, in which case Lord Nerva would have remained unaffected. But he has ever been devoted to Garlemald. For glory everlasting, he would say. To watch the Empire he loved so dearly crumble? I can think of no one who would be more stricken by the sight. It would seem we are right to assume what became of Nerva. And it does not surprise me the beast would choose to make its nest within the Tower of Babel. It stands atop the remains of the Imperial Palace and the throne he revered so highly. But the Empire is no more, and Lord Nerva apparently is no longer the man he once was. He deserves to be laid to rest, together with his dreams of glory. We will fell the beast, you have my word. Apologies for the interruption. Kanisa has arrived, and we are ready to depart. Tis good to see you, Desiree. Master Fortuno? I've spoken with Lawrence of a ward protecting the blasphemy. I'm quite confident some men of ether based magic bars our way. If I may be so bold, Adasitia, we reached the same conclusion initially, but that simply is not possible. These creatures born of our final days are devoid of ether. As such, they would be unable to produce such a barrier in a manner of which we are accustomed. Do you suppose it's possible they manipulated dynamis to achieve a similar effect? I too thought to dismiss the notion of a barrier fueled by Aether. That is, until I stepped foot here in Garlemald. Even now I can sense streams of Aether flowing toward the tower. Its purpose was, after all, to harvest reserves of energy sufficient to reach the moon. Even when it's incapable of manipulating air for directly, it stands to reason control of the tower and would alleviate such a need. It is merely conjecture, of course. I cannot say for certain that I have examined the currents with mine own eyes. Might I ask you to accompany me? I would join you as well, if I may. My injuries would keep me from being of use in battle, but my knowledge of the land should serve you just as well as my blade. I would not be opposed to your company, but it's not my decision to make. She may go, so long as she remains under watch by you and the others. Very good. Well, I suggest we begin with Regio Urbanissimo. I sense the greatest confluence of air and wet vicinity. 
Also, nice detail for Dola no longer has that choker, because it was removed after the world quest, as Rauban announced. Good, but I think I make a cut here and we continue with next time. Until then, I'm Mace and don't get lost. <laughs>